I'm an addict for Snickers. What's good, what's good? It's your boy, DJ Dells, back with a brand new episode here at the Sneaker Addict Show. Brand new sneaker podcast for the weekend. Before I start, make sure to please let me know that you enjoy these by just hitting that like button real quick. Just lets me know, and I appreciate you all doing that and checking out the show. You keep showing me that love, I'll keep recording, alright? Now, before I answer questions from Instagram, I will first speak about the Air Jordan 2015 Holiday preview that was released yesterday including the aqua eights which i'm very excited about i'm a huge fan of that shoe and that colorway can't wait to get a new pair because i have the older model and the paint is cracking the upper is kind of fading a little bit it just looks like shit there's no other way to say it it's beginning to really look like shit from me wearing it like crazy so i need a new pair and i'm very happy that they are finally retroing this damn shoe so Definitely looking forward to that. There's another Jordan 8 celebrating Michael Jordan's three-peat with the Bulls. Loving it. I love how they are incorporating the different colors from all the teams that he beat. And I love the logo on the tongue. They switched up the logo real hot. Can't wait to see them in person. There's also the Chrome 8 that are releasing. A lot of people are excited about it. I'm going to be honest with you. Not the biggest fan. I don't think they're whack. Just doesn't do it for me. The 8 isn't my favorite Jordan. Yes, I like it, but I feel like the colorways are what makes the sneaker. And I have plenty of other black shoes that I like more than the 8 in a black with like kind of a metallic chrome kind of look to it. So this isn't my favorite shoe. I'd rather see the 8 with more of a colorful look to them. I know there's tons of people that are kind of like, eh, I love these damn shoes. I can't wait for them to release. And that's what's up, man. You know, we all got different taste buds. I'm just keeping it 100 and telling you what I like. And that's what I like. I like, you know, the 8s with more of a nicer, vibrant kind of color versus, you know, something blacked out with hits of chrome. Also, there's an Air Jordan 1 coming out, which people are loving, including myself. I kind of wish that it wasn't dark powder blue. I wish it was actual powder blue. Dark powder blue is like the blue Jordan 3 that released last year. I wish it was a lighter blue and not a dark kind of smurf blue. These are coming out at the end of this year. All these shoes I'm talking about are coming out like, you know, November, December, around that time frame. Unless they switch up dates, which they always do. But make sure to always go to the blog, the sneakeraddict.com, the sneakeraddict.com for your sneaker news. That's my blog ran by me to keep you guys in tune to what's going on. Release dates, release changes, even restocks and all that good stuff. But pretty sure all these will be coming out November, December. The Jordan 1, I'm sure people are going to be going ham about. As I said, though, I wish it was more of a UNC light baby blue kind of colorway, not a darker blue. The Laney Jordan 14 Low is coming out. I mean, this hasn't came out since, I think, 99. <laughs> it's crazy. I can't wait for these to release. Definitely looking forward to them. I've been wanting them to release. Hot sneaker. Love the 14. Also, the sweater. Air Jordan 7s. The McDonald's 7s, some are calling them already too. Some are calling them the Bill Cosby's. Some are calling them the Huxtables. Some are calling them the Biggie Smalls. The Cool G sweaters. A lot of different nicknames. The actual concept is inspired by Michael Jordan's commercials with McDonald's. I think the shoe is hot. The only thing I do not like about it is that I do not like the white upper. I think if it was a black upper with this sweater kind of designed throughout it, it would have looked a lot better. That's my opinion. Some are going to agree, some will disagree. There's a lot of people that do not like this shoe from what I've seen. I mean, people are saying they don't like it, they think it's whack, they think Jordan is reaching, trying to grab all kinds of concepts with this one and the three-peat. I don't think so at all. I think that people that are fans of Jordan, like, really, like, watched him from when they were kids like myself we're gonna enjoy this you know and then some people are gonna and but some people i think that are a little younger like oh they're reaching for concepts they're trying to you know sell us anything right now and you're entitled to your opinion you know i'm not saying there's nothing wrong with you thinking that so don't think because we think differently then you know i think nothing um, negative about you because they're just sneakers at the end of the day and you know we're just talking about shoes that we wear that's all it's about 
But I think that it's cool. Like when they think of concepts, you know, that are creative. Sometimes they're a miss. There's some that I think were misses in the past. I think that people that um, seen this sweater shoe, you know, that were around, you know, and watching those old commercials, this brought them back to those commercials. So it did something positive, you know, like people may say, oh, they're reaching, but it did what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to bring you back. And give you that that feeling like, oh man, I remember these. You know, I remember him with Larry Bird. You know, playing for that Big Mac and all that. Like when you're a kid and you watch these commercials, you know, and then you remember them later on. It's just it's dope when you remember them. So I could appreciate you know them doing new concepts, bringing new stories to the youth that may not have known about these old commercials. I'm sure so, I'm sure there's tons of people that just started learning more about Michael Jordan just by seeing images of this sweater commercial and just seeing, you know, the old classic Michael Jordan commercials. So I like it. I think it did what it was supposed to do. And I think on foot, it's going to look hot. Some people are like, ah, oh, you got to wear a cool G sweater now with these. You don't got to get all crazy and wear the same exact outfit as Michael Jordan to match these. You just got to wear a shirt or a hoodie or a sweater that got a few of the colorways from the upper. You don't got to get all ham with it and you know, go crazy and have all these multicolors going on, making yourself look all crazy. The shoe is not hard to match up. You got a lot of different colors that you could work with and you could just concentrate on two or three colors on an on a top and then, you know, the bottom doesn't have to match with the shoe as long as it you know, it's the right pair of pants you're wearing or cargoes or whatever you're choosing to wear, you know. It's not gonna be that difficult to wear these shoes. There's some people that have spoken about that. I hate when people try too hard to match where it's like exact everything's exact 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 like to me it's just too much like sometimes that's just my opinion so that's my thoughts on all those releases I like them all the only things that I do not like is the Jordan one I wish it was a North Carolina UNC blue and not that dark powder blue I just I just don't get why they brought that to life last year that dark powder blue I don't like that colorway so with that said let's get into some questions now and if I don't answer your question I apologize I skipped it by accident because I have a lot of questions or I've already answered it Alex Jet Life wants to know do you think a sneaker can get retro too many times and he wrote, in his opinion, hell no. I don't think so. I mean, they're sneakers. They get dirty. You want to get a new pair if you really enjoy wearing them. Why don't they retro, like, the Air Jordan 3 more often? Like, why did they have to put it in a vault? They should release the Air Jordan white cement and the black cement, like, every other year, I think. Like, it's just such a great shoe. Why not put it out like you put out Air Maxes or... Air Force once but some heads they like that like limited side of things where not too many people are wearing the same shoe as you so they like that you know they had a pair that they kept dead stock in the closet for a couple of years and they break them out and they're stunning and I ain't even gonna lie man I love that feeling sometimes when you know I break out an old pair of shoes that not too many people have DS anymore because everyone's worn their pair and you break it out, man, you just like, bang, you know, you're killing them with them, you know? So I understand their point of view, but to me, at the end of the day, there's always going to be a pair of sneakers that you're going to be killing it with that not everyone has. Certain sneakers, I feel, are so amazing. Like, they should release them, like, a lot, you know? They should always retro them. They shouldn't put them in vaults like the Air Jordan 3. I think that's ridiculous. All right, moving on. Snow Blake wants to know, how many sneakers do I own? I have no clue. I stopped counting years ago because I just didn't give a shit, to be honest with you. Excuse my French. I really just did not care how many shoes I owned anymore. Probably around the 500 area around there, I would say. That's probably what I would say. Around 500, give or take. Uh, Swaggy1 wants to know my opinion on the LeBron 12 Cowboy shoe. I think it's hot. I'm definitely looking to pick that shoe up. And... Also wants to know about my opinion with like LeBron and Kobe's. Are they going to be like Jordan shoes, you know, later on down the road? Like when LeBron retires, Kobe retires, which I assume is soon. I think so. It's going to be the same thing. I'm sure they'll retro them. I mean, 
Why wouldn't they? They're popular basketball players. They're amazing. Why wouldn't they? People are buying their shoes. People are growing up to these guys. As people get older, they're going to want to wear the shoes they wore back in the days or they couldn't afford back in the days that they could afford now. They'll definitely be putting out retros. Moving on, NYC Lifestyles Photos wants me to speak about Nike bringing back the whole Hair Jordan Bugs Bunny campaign. Supposed to do new commercials. He thinks it's dope. Tawan, I guess that's his name. Um, I think it's dope. I hope they do do that, man. I mean, that would be great. They do new commercials. Next, we have a question from Rashid. He wants to know... How do I feel about the upcoming Jordans for the holidays, especially the three P8s? I already spoke about that, but um, yeah, I like them all. I think they're all nice. And he has another question, the Colby 10 Low that released and the Highs that are coming out. How do I feel about them? I like the Colby Lows. I think that the Colby Low is nice. I just feel like it's way overpriced. It's way overpriced, $180 for a low-top sneaker. I just think it's ridiculous how much they're charging. It doesn't look like it fits the price tag. That's my opinion. Some may agree, some may disagree. Next question is from Thuggist. He wants to know, what pair of kicks did I have a chance to cop and regret not buying? Probably the... Nike Air Force One Quest Lows, that's definitely one pair. It was over retail, but the thing is, now, whenever I run into the size I need, which is an eight and a half, by the way, the price is just way too high. Also, the Yeezy Ones, I could have gotten them for a decent price. I got the wrong size to begin with. And when those released, people weren't doing trades like they are now. It wasn't like how it was then. And I got a nine and a half. It didn't fit me. I could have copped a nine or an eight and a half probably for like $600. And I didn't. I kick myself in the ass now because now it's either you got to get them used because everyone's worn their pair already. Or, you know, if it's a DS pair, it's so much damn money now. So those are two pairs that I really want that I could have got for a resale price. It was still over retail, but it wasn't as bad as it is now. I mean, the Quest Loves you could find for not that crazy of a price, but it's hard for me to find the right price with my size. You know what I mean? Like, I could find them for a good price, but it's not my size. And then Air Force One, I have to wear an 8.5 or a 9 because they crease easy. Same with, it's the same situation with the damn Yeezys, the Yeezy Ones. I really want Yeezy Ones. I really want the quest love air force one low also like those are two that i really really want to wear like i just want to wear them um even if i could find a pair that's near dead stock i would do that at this point for a decent price or a trade of course if anyone's out there that that's listening to me that can make that happen hit me up hit my instagram or my twitter up and let's keep it moving with oh so got kicks what round will Pacquiao knock out Mayweather, if at all? I don't think he's going to knock him out. As much as I love Manny Pacquiao, people always ask me all the time, are you Filipino? Are you Filipino? Yes, I am. I'm half Filipino. I would love to see Manny Pacquiao knock that motherfucker out, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a close fight, too. It's going to be really close. But I really doubt that Manny will be able to knock him out. Alright, Eric Garcia860 wants to know my opinion on quality versus price with recent Nike and Jordan releases. And shout out to Eric Garcia from the 860. Now, answering his question, I think Nike does a great job. I think it's really just Jordan brand that you just get bad quality with. You may think I'm wrong, but if you really look at all the sneakers you've bought in the past two years... When it comes to Nike, with me, I've never bought a pair of Nike shoes and been like, this sucks. The quality sucks. Look at the paint. Look at this. It's only been with Jordan brand. Like, you look at, like, the Jordan 7s that released. 
the French blues, which I actually liked, but the paint sucked on the arches. They were sloppy. I think it takes them a lot of time to actually sit there and paint each arch a different color, so they kind of rushed through it in the factory. Even the Marvin the Martian 7s that I just recently reviewed, I will put a link in the description box below so you can see that review. The arches are very sloppy as far as the paint. And a lot of people were saying, man, the paint job was terrible on those. And you know what? You don't understand, man. I had other pairs I could have shot. I picked that pair because it was one of the better pairs. Some of the other pairs, the arches were worse. The paint jobs were really bad. And these are retail pairs. This isn't no, you know, early or whatever the hell you want to call it. This is retail, like coming out, you know, on release day. I think sevens, you know, certain pairs, they rush in the factories because they they got a quota to fulfill. They have to make sure that they get this amount in this amount of time. Now, like the Air Jordan 4s, the Oreos, I mean, those were phenomenal. The quality was amazing. I had to buy two pairs of them. I was so impressed with them. The, the Columbia 4s, the Legend Blue for the young heads out there, the quality of those were amazing also. So it depends on the shoe. All right, let's keep this moving. Next question, we've got... Marcus Poppy <laughs> wants to know about the Yeezys. How they said it was going to be easy to cop and it's not. What Adidas is doing is they're just trying to take advantage of the hype. Eventually they'll make more and more pairs, but they're going to do it slow motion because it's helping their business as a whole. I know so many people I see on the internet now really into Adidas that weren't into Adidas before. And... It's because of Kanye West, man. Kanye West is popular and, you know, he's pop culture. People see Kanye West now a part of Adidas. They want to rock with Adidas like they were rocking with Nike. I've been wearing Adidas for many, many years since I was a kid. I love Adidas. This shoe is like really one of the first shoes I've ever seen me having an issue getting. It's a little disappointing. I noticed a few people left comments in some of the Adidas videos I've reviewed saying, Oh, I thought you were down with Adidas. How come you can't get the Yeezy? Da, 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 da. First of all, I'm not down with Adidas. I'm down with no one. I'm not signed to any sneaker company. I'm not working with any sneaker company. I do not get paid by any sneaker company. I wish that was the case. I would love to work for a sneaker company. I would love that. That would be like a dream come true. I would really love that if there was ever a job available for me. If any brands are listening, I'm willing to move if the job is right too. Because I'm really passionate about shoes and I know I know what's hot. But I do not work for any company and Adidas does show me love. But Adidas basketball shows me love. Adidas running shows me love. That is Way different than Adidas Originals. Adidas Originals is like Jeremy Scott, Kanye West now. Whenever they do like side projects, like when they did the Star Wars collaborations, that is Adidas Originals, you know. And including, you know, old classics like the Stan Smiths, of, at the Metro Attitude Highs. I get a lot of love with Adidas basketball. In the past, Adidas Originals used to show me a lot of love, but... Ever since Kanye West signed with them, it's like, you know, they act mad brand new with me, which is all good. I mean, I don't expect much from anyone because if you do, then you're just crazy like and unrealistic. But, you know, it's crazy to see how these shoes are so hard to get. And the whole thing was he was signing with Adidas so that people could wear his shoes and not be stuck in a bubble like what Nike was doing, letting him only put out a certain amount of shoes. Adidas is kind of doing the same thing. Yeah, they put out more shoes already than they did with the Nike Yeezy pieces that they released, but still, it's like the same thing, though. They're still not allowing the masses to, to buy the shoe like with ease. And that was the one thing Kanye was promising the public that, you know, you could literally look at the shoe before you even buy it even. And that's totally not the case. And it's whack, you know. It's really whack for people that wanted to see the shoe, wanted to buy the shoe. I tried buying the shoe. I had no luck buying it on the internet. I was on the computer. I had a few of my friends on their computers. We were all trying to cop the shoe. 
we weren't able to get it. So it's just a case of, you know, Adidas kind of changing because, you know, they're trying to monopolize on this promotion they're getting through Kanye West and his popularity. Eventually, though, they're going to put out more shoes. They didn't sign Kanye West for something short term. They signed with Kanye West to put out a lot of product and make a lot of money. They're just creating this buzz and this hype and they're feeding people slow. They're going to keep on making more and more runs. And, and I really feel like people are going to really be kicking themselves in the ass later on that are paying thousands of dollars for the Yeezy Boost because I feel like they're going to just keep putting out more and more shoes slowly. They're just feeding the public slowly. And I really feel that if you are not someone that could just afford blowing off mad money just because you want the shoe right now, you really need to just chill out and just wait. You will eventually get your pair. This is the first colorway. They're going to put out a bunch of other colorways also. And that's another thing you got to put in perspective. You may not be that crazy about this first colorway. You could always get the next colorway. I guarantee you the next colorway is going to be probably all black. And it's going to, to me, it's going to be a hotter shoe than this one. An all black version, I would rather have than this colorway. That's just my opinion. There may be another colorway where they break it up. They may put new materials on it. You just never know. So I wouldn't rush into buying off a reseller unless you just have money coming out of your ears and your ass. And, you know, it's just like money's just everywhere. It's nothing to you. You could just, you know, throw money all over the place, then go for it. But if you're someone that, you know, you got some money, but you're not. You know, as I said, the money's not coming out of your ears. You don't have money like that where you're balling. There's no budget. I would wait because there's probably going to be hotter colorways. And let's move on to E Price the King. What 14 kicks in 2014 you missed out on? I can't name 14 kicks right now. <laughs> that's that's like something I got to like think about, you know, and I don't got that much time. I got to keep this thing moving, but... Um, kicks that I missed out on. I did pretty good this year, man. I'll tell you the kicks that I really am disappointed I didn't get right off top easy is the Lance Mountains. Both of them. I really wanted those Lance Mountains. Like, I'm so annoyed still that I don't have those and the Derek Jeter ones. I need those in a size 8.5, a, a 9, or, I mean, I guess I would do a 9.5. If the price is right or if you're willing to do any trades, I really want those. The Lance Mountains mean a lot to me. When I was a kid, I used to skate, and I loved Lance Mountain. I loved the whole Bones Brigade crew. They mean a lot to me. It brings me back to my childhood. Derek Jeter is my mother's favorite baseball player. I grew up watching Derek Jeter, and I used to watch with my mom. My mom recently passed away, too. I'm not using that as, oh, let's go get Dells' shoe now. But I'm saying, like, just want you guys to understand, like, how much that shoe would mean to me if I owned it. Because, you know, my mother just recently passed. And, like, I just really want that shoe. I've been looking on eBay to actually buy it. But it's crazy. People want, like, $600 for it. I'm not going to give $600 for that shoe. It's not happening. If someone has, like, an extra pair, they want to do trades. I'll do trades equivalent to, you know what the shoe is worth on a resale tip, but um, I would never pay resale prices for that. As much as like it's special to me, as far as with memories and stuff like that, it's not happening. But those are definitely some shoes that I would really want. It's so Reg, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Thoughts on Retro sitting on the shelves. I told you guys months ago they were going to sit on the shelves. This is something I told you guys. People can't hang with this price, 190 And the resellers aren't able to make their real flips off the shoes at 190 If you live in a big city, taxes are about 8 9%. You're looking at $250 box price after taxes. And then how much are you going to literally sell it for? It's not worth it for a lot of the small time, small fry resellers that are you know, just buying a pair here and there and flipping them, it's not worth it. If they're only going to make a couple of dollars off of it, they're not going to make at least 50 to 75 bucks. It's not worth it. So that's why retros are beginning to sit. And that's great because before you know it, we're going to start seeing retros on sale, hopefully. That will be the next thing, hopefully. We'll see. Jacob925 wants to know, 
my opinion on the Jordan 14 Low that's releasing this holiday. I can't wait. I was saying it before. I can't wait. The Laney 14, dope. Can't wait to get them. Bay Yao wants to know how the wholesale price for Nike Jordan brand have affected on mom and pop shops since the higher retail has caused a lot of stuff to sit, which these shops just can't sell to clear stock. Well, with the mom and pop shops, they're getting their shoes for way under retail. They're not getting them for like $180 and selling them for $190. They have an advantage in a way. They just need to actually charge less than retail. And they'll still get their money up and they got to push those pieces. A lot of mom and pop shops I know, they're killing it. They're moving their inventory fast. It goes up. If they don't sell in the first week, they slice the price down, you know. So that's what I see. Some mom and pop shops are greedy. You got to play the game. And the, as the prices go up, sometimes you got to switch your game, switch your lane. That's part of, you know, business and, and hustling, you know. not on, and Hustling ain't always, you know, in a negative way like being in the streets hustling. I'm talking about just business and hustling and moving. If the shoes ain't selling and you're in the mom and pop shops and you're competing with these other big stores the one thing that you could do is slice your price down you know take it down a notch get put it on the retail a little bit and you'll be able to make your money these guys that mom and pop shops real mom and pop shops that are actually have that actually have contracts with nike they're getting them for way under retail the shoes now there's stores that some people call mom and pop shops that aren't really Licensed stores, they're resellers that are acting like mom and pop shops, but they're actually resellers buying shoes for retail and then selling them for above retail. I mean, to me, those are just resellers to me, but actual real physical mom and pop shops, the ones that are, you know, struggling right now, they need to change their game up. They need to sell them for under retail if they're not flying off the shelves and they're still going to make income. I'm sure a lot of the money they make aren't on the shoes anyway. They're on apparel and other brands. So that's my thoughts on that. Moving on, IDH Kicks wants to know LeBron 12 Palmer. I think it's hot. So, you know, I could really say I'm really digging that low that's coming out. I have more information on the blog, thesneakerotic.com, by the way. Also, make sure to hit that like button right now if you're enjoying this because, you know, I've been on here for a, a while. I noticed this is a, kind of a long podcast. But I still have a lot more questions. Uh, just make sure to hit that like button right now. Let me know that you're enjoying this, you know, so I know. Because I'm just looking at the time and I'm like, shit, I've been on here for a hot minute. But I don't mind as long as you guys are enjoying it. So just let me know. No Bum Kicks wants to know, do you want Yeezys to be an easy cop like they sit on the shelves? Of course, I don't give a shit about reselling. I, I don't know what half of the shoes that I own are worth, more than half of them. A lot of times I'll have friends over and they'll tell me, like, oh my God, you know how much this is worth? I don't care how much shoes are worth. I never look to see what my shoes are worth. I buy the shoes because I want them and that's it. I never intend on selling my kicks. I've never bought a pair of kicks and said, oh my God, I'm going to make a fortune off of this. I just I just buy the shoe because I want it. Uh, so I don't care about that whole type of stuff like some people do I really don't man I don't care about any shoe sitting on the shelves being available to everyone That's not what I'm about a lot of people will disagree with me and that's fine You know they want shoes to be you know limited they want to have a Kanye West shoe that a lot of people don't have you know And that's fine as I was saying before I was talking a little bit about you know having the shoe that no one got So you know there's two sides of that Moving on, Eric Lopez, 711, is asking me, basically, how do I feel about shoes that weren't hyped? They sat on the shelves. They didn't sell well. Like, for instance, back in the days, the Columbia 11s, the Mocha 3s, they weren't the most popular. And now they're considered grails to a lot of people. And even, like, sneakers, like, in the past, maybe, like, four or five years that released, like, the... Tribe Court Quest 1s, the Nightshade 2s, the Squadron 3s. He's saying those didn't sell that well, but, you know, they're beginning to get sought after now. Like, what's my whole thoughts on that? I think the whole thing about those shoes from the past that sat around is that the people that bought the shoe were people that really wanted to wear the shoe. They weren't really, quote-unquote, sneaker heads. I know there were some that were, 
that have like you know tons of kicks but a lot of them were just heads that were like you know what i like this sneaker i'm gonna wear it more of the general public so those kind of people got their hands on the shoe and actually wore them instead of a lot of people that are collectors that just kept the shoes in their closet and whatnot so there's not as many ds pairs dead stock brand new pairs so now that you know years have gone by people that actually like this shoe they want the shoe brand new and there's not as many because most of the people that bought the actual for instance like the mochas they've been worn you know even the tribe called quest they've been worn people that bought i mean the tribe called quest one was sitting in stores for forever no one wanted them shits i couldn't believe it when i seen them i was at bx sports in the bronx and i seen them and i was like oh my god i went crazy when i seen them like and uh, they were laughing at me because, you know, I was really going crazy. I was so excited. I seen it in the case. I needed it. And it wasn't even a big deal. Like, the shoe, like, sat on the shelves. I could have bought, like, 30 pairs of them. But now they're beginning to be more desirable. The Nightshade 2, that just released last year. I, I think that shoe was kind of desirable, though. I, I would have to disagree with you, Eric, on that. I think that shoe, people actually really wanted that shoe. I didn't see that sitting anywhere. Maybe where you're at. The Squadron 13, that shit sat. I thought, you know, it was a cool sneaker, but I think that's going to be one that in a couple of years it'll be more desirable, and it's going to be exactly like I was saying. A lot of people are wearing the sneaker like crazy. They're beat. You know, people that actually are going to wear the kicks bought the kicks. And I'm not saying that sneakerheads don't wear sneakers, but what I'm saying is for the few people that aren't getting what I'm saying, majority of the people that bought them bought them to slap on their feet right away they didn't buy them to put in their closet and wait a couple of years it wasn't a popular sneakerhead kind of release if you dig what i'm saying and it was like that with also what's another great example the detroit sixes which i love my boy dallas penn loves those too i mean they were selling for like 90 dollars no one wanted them but to me i thought they were hot i love the patent leather on them a lot of people are like oh patent leather on a six but now they're selling i think at a resale price of over 200 dollars 250 somewhere around there but no one wanted those and now people when i wear them sometimes they're like yo man i slept on those those are hot so Sometimes it's about those shoes that weren't that popular, you know, people see them later on and they start liking them more just by throughout the years, you looking at them more and more and you start saying, you know what, I kind of like how those look like, it. especially when you see a shoe on foot. Sometimes a sneaker, when you look at just the photo, it's not hot, but when you actually see people wearing it, it's a whole nother level. You're like, yo, those look sick on feet. You know, people change their mind on sneakers. There's the sneakers, I'm sure that I've said in the past I didn't like and then I ended up liking them. It's just you start looking at them more and more and you start saying, you know what, I kind of like those now. So that's my thoughts on that. One Invisible Bully. Talk about those wheat LeBron 12s. <laughs> I'm loving those. I can't wait to buy them. It's as simple as that. You know, obviously they're paying homage to the wheat generation LeBron ones. I can't wait to get those. Really, really hot. I've grown to really enjoy wearing the LeBron 12. I think it's a really nice pair of kicks. I still hate how low the swoosh is. I think that if the swoosh wasn't so low, it could have been my favorite LeBron of all times. Very, very comfortable. But being that the swoosh is so low, it just bothers me. I have like a love-hate thing with this sneaker. It's just like, it's hot, but that swoosh just still to this day annoys me. The person complaining. <laughs> that's, that's this person's screen name. On Instagram, the person complaining. That's pretty funny. Do you think Jordan Brand has remastered their product as promised? Well, I kind of just spoke about that. And um, just to, you know, just to bring it back real quick. I think that some of the models they did great jobs with and some of the models they have not. I think material-wise on the 4s were excellent. I thought that the 10s were pretty close to what they were giving us before with the 10s. As far as the leather, I did speak about that when I was reviewing the Bulls over Broadway. The leather really reminded me of the last time they released the Chicago 10s. And on the paint job of the 7s, you know, on all those arcs that they have in different colors, they always seem to speed when they're painting and they still are doing that. The leather was nice on the French blues. 
the Marvin the Martians, the materials are, they're not bad, they're not amazing, nothing to rave about, but the paint job is still kind of shitty, so some of the shoes they're doing it right, some of the shoes they're not doing right, I just think that the price range is kind of absurd for like, for instance, the Marvin the Martian 7s, when you have an okay new buck with an okay leather, shitty paint job, and you're still charging 190 and I paid 190 for the Oreos that had phenomenal tumbled leather. It was, I mean, amazing. I had to literally go out in the snow and buy another pair because I just couldn't stop myself from doing that because it was such a nice pair of kicks. And I didn't mind paying 190 I was like, here, take my money. Like, just coughing up basically $400 in one day on two pairs of kicks and not even blinking an eye. That's when you have something that's a great product. But like the Marvin the Martians being 190, the French Blues being 190, it's like, you know, I'm not feeling that. I just feel like they're way overpriced. You're not getting what you paid for at all. And it's ridiculous. So that's my opinion on that. Little Danny 2131. Talk about the Laney 14s. I already did. Shout out to you though, since I said your screen name. Big homie Barry wants to know about the Air Jordan 12 flu game. Is it real or a rumor? From this point, I think it's a rumor. I mean, you know, I heard that it's coming out. Not the actual retro, like in that new buck with the logo. I heard that the actual Bread 12 is coming out with the leather rubber. I heard that one is coming out. But nothing set in stone yet. And they're already speaking about the holiday releases, so who knows? Hopefully it does. That's a great pair of kicks. I would love that to be true. And um, we'll do one more question. Can you speak on how old is too old to love and wear kicks? Keep grinding. 44 years young. E Money Sport is asking this. I think that 44 years old, I'm taking it, he is, obviously. I don't think that there's nothing wrong with wearing sneakers Till the day you die, there's sneakers. I mean, it's different with clothing. Like sneakers, I don't see nothing wrong with a person that's older wearing the same sneakers as someone that's younger. They're just sneakers. As far as with clothing, maybe there's some shit that you shouldn't wear. You know, it's just you just gotta the rest of your outfit gotta not be as youthful, I think. You gotta learn how to dress as you get older, you know. But I don't even see 44 as like super old, you know. People are still very relevant. It's a different day and age now. You know, when you would see back in the days, like when I was like really young, like 44 year olds were lame, like when I was a kid, you know, like they didn't know what's hot. They were listening to, they were so behind, you know what I mean? Even 30 year olds were so behind with shit, you know. Nowadays, everyone's kind of in the same lane, you know, like they're just progressing, progressing. And I think that has to do a lot with technology. And just the way the world's spinning so fast where you're kind of forced to just try to catch up with everything. Like, no one's even caught up. Everyone's just trying to catch up. Because the world just is just so fast. Everything is like, bang, bang, bang. Like, everyone wants everything fast and right then and there and right at your fingertips. So, I don't think that um, you have anything to worry about. As long as you're not looking ridiculous out there. Like, you'll see, like... Older people, like, stuck in the 90s wearing big-ass fucking jeans and, like, that shit is crazy. Like, but as long as you're not looking like a fucking blast from the past, then I think you're good money, you know? Because I know some people, you'll you know what I'm saying. Like, you'll go out and you'll see someone dressed in some big-ass fucking jeans with some hot Jordans. They may even have, like, they may have the hottest Jordans, but the jean game is weak. The fucking shirt game is weak. Or it's old. Like, you know, the whole style is off. Like, it's crazy. Like, I mean, everyone's had their moments, though. You know, I'm not, I'm far from the, the greatest dressed dude. But I, I've i gotten better as time has gone on. You know, I, it's something you just work at, you know. I think we're going to end it right there. That's it for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to go to the blog, thesneakerratic.com, every Friday and Saturday. At 9.30 a.m., I will have tons of information on all the releases or most of the releases, 9.30 a.m. 
Make sure to hit that like button right now if you enjoyed this podcast. Follow all my social networks because they will help you out. There was restocks on a bunch of Jordans this morning. I tweeted them out over at the Sneak Addict over at Twitter. Look in the description box below. Follow all my social networks. Thanks again for listening. This was a long podcast for people that are always saying, man, we need a longer podcast, man. The 20 minute podcast are too short. I hope you enjoyed this one right here. Catch up on all the reviews. I reviewed the Marvin the Martian 7. I reviewed a ton of other shoes. I can't even remember what I reviewed right now. But a ton of episodes. Look in the description box below. Go to the main page. And tell your friends about the show by just sharing this episode on your Facebook and on your Twitter. And if this is your first time checking me out. Go to the main page here at YouTube.com. Forward slash The Sneaker Addict. And watch my episodes. I got playlists organized real nice. You want to watch Jordan reviews? I got that. Popular reviews, collection reviews, Reebok reviews, Adidas reviews. You name it, I got it. Check it all out, all right? Thanks again. And with that said, we out.